60 Minutes Rewind. Could a simple shot in the neck be a breakthrough for the debilitating symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder? The toll from PTSD is growing. About 20 veterans a day commit suicide in what the VA is now calling an epidemic. Only 40% find relief from PTSD with current treatments. The new procedure, called Stellate Ganglion Block, or SGB, is so fast-acting that many believe it could be a game-changer. Used for decades to treat chronic pain, it's only recently been tried for PTSD. Now, the U.S. Army is spending $2 million to find out more. Nobody is calling it a cure, but the promise of a new therapy can't come soon enough for many veterans we spoke with frustrated and despairing that nothing they have tried has worked. My PTSD was like a monster on your back that controls your entire life. This is what Sergeant First Class Jonathan Ziering faced during his 455 days as part of the American offensive in Kunar province in eastern Afghanistan. The densely forested mountains provided cover for the Taliban fighters who launched almost daily attacks. After 15 months, Zering couldn't shake the feeling he was going to be ambushed at any moment. So your instincts served you well in Afghanistan, mm -hmm. but what about when you came home? When I came home, it did not serve me very well because my brain was still in war, but I was living, trying to be a, a father and a husband and and uh, trying to be a circle in a whole room of squares. I did not feel like the same person anymore. He suffered for 12 years. His marriage fell apart. And I went through this period of time where I was like, man, I wish I would have just died in Afghanistan. I could have been remembered as a hero and a shining beacon of what soldiers are supposed to be. Finally, he reached out to Walter Reed Medical Center. Were you aware that you were suffering from PTSD? I thought it was a joke. You thought PTSD was a joke? At first. Everyone knows it's hard being in combat, but like that's our job. Mm. So being around only military veterans that are all combat guys, it was difficult to ever raise your hand and ask for help. After 18 years of continuous war, the numbers of soldiers and veterans suffering from PTSD has reached an all-time high. First-line treatments at the VA are antidepressants and talk therapy. Zaring told us he was asked to write down his worst combat memories. They wanted me to read it 20 times before I went to bed. And I did it one or two days. And I crinkled the piece of paper and threw it away. I'm like, this, why am I doing this? I'm like, I watched people I know die. Like, that's always going to bother me. Did you see any improvement? Zero. Marine Sergeant Henry Koto also was at the breaking point. I thought if I keep going the same way I was going, I, I, there was only two ways I was going to end, dead or in jail. He spent months patrolling Iraqi towns like this one, the war on every corner. After four deployments, Koto told us he was plagued by nightmares. He self-medicated with alcohol and marijuana. Even though I tried to tell myself, hey, I can calm down, I'm no longer over there, it, it was really hard for me to shut it off. What did you think of that at the time? It got to the point that I thought nothing's going to help. I'm going to lose my relationship with my kids. I already lost my relationship with my ex-wife. Uh, I lost a lot of friends, especially because, you know, they just didn't want to deal with me anymore. Let's go in. He told us he had tried 12 medications, all the VA had to offer, but nothing worked. All right, Henry, your eyeglasses needs to come up. When his doctor suggested an experimental treatment called Stellet Ganglion Block, or SGB, he had nothing to lose. Lay down, please. We went along to watch Henry Koto's second treatment at the Long Beach VA. The injection took less than five minutes. Within two minutes, Koto told us he felt a huge difference. Like, I can't control my smile right now. now is it like a sense of euphoria? It's like... Uh... Like a big weight has been lifted off my, sh my shoulders and my chest, and I can actually relax. 
he came back for a second SGB to bolster the effects of the first two months earlier. It immediately changed your mood, your behavior. Immediately, um, my brother took me home. He saw that I was constantly smiling. And he's like, dude, like, I don't know what they did, but it, it's amazing. Clean your neck. This is how the procedure works. A local anesthetic is injected deep into the neck to bathe a cluster of nerves called the stellate ganglion. I'm going to inject the actual medication, all right? These nerves help control the brain's fight or flight reactions, signals that go haywire with PTSD. And please go oblique towards you. Doctors use a fluoroscope and contrasting dye, you can see it spread out next to the spine, to guide the needle to the stellate ganglion. When the anesthetic is injected, it seems to numb or turn off the PTSD symptoms. <laughs> it clears the body in a day, but the effects last up to six months, for some even longer, and there are no known side effects. Were you surprised at the outcome? Extremely, yeah. Extremely surprised. Oh, yeah, because there's very few things in medicine that work that quickly. Dr. Michael Alkier is trying to pinpoint changes in the parts of the brain associated with PTSD. Doctors don't fully understand how SGB works, but the newest theory is based on research that shows PTSD is not just psychological. Exposure to bomb blasts and the prolonged stress of dangerous redeployments can cause physical changes to the brain, making it hyperactive. Dr. Al Kier told us 80% of their SGB patients had relief from depression and suicidal thoughts. It almost sounds like you're rebooting these vets' brains. That is exactly a very good way to think of it, yeah. In the waiting room, Henry Koto's mother is overwhelmed. After watching her son self-destruct, she told us SGB gave her son back. It's not a standalone cure, but Koto told us his regular therapy now is starting to work. In the first couple of weeks, I didn't believe it. People would be like, hey, your personality has really changed and stuff like that. You know, I think we're going on two months. It, it feels like I got a second chance at life. The story will continue after this. Despite its promise, SGB is available at only 12 of the 172 VA hospitals. It's still considered experimental. The Army study is the first clinical trial for SGB with a placebo. Over 100 active duty soldiers with PTSD participated, and it's now under peer review. If the anecdotal success of SGB is duplicated, it could revolutionize the way PTSD is treated. How have things been going? <clears throat> Anxiety's been pretty high. For now, most veterans rely on word of mouth to find private clinics like this one, run by Dr. Sean Mulvaney, a former Navy SEAL. Like, the night stuff's getting, like, a lot worse. Among military doctors, he was the first to see SGB's potential, especially after his years as a combat medic for special operations soldiers. When we asked them to go do a dirty job, we didn't tell them what was going to happen to them. We didn't tell them we were going to break them. Dakota Meyer, a former Marine corporal, sought Dr. Mulvaney's help. In 2011, he was the first living Marine to be awarded the Medal of Honor since the Vietnam War. One, two, three, stick. Dr. Mulvaney stumbled onto SGB Same 10 deal. years ago. I'm slowly starting to inject. Some. He had read a newspaper article about a treatment for, of all things, hot flashes that targeted the same nerve signals that PTSD disrupts. So he tried it. Since then, he's done about a thousand injections. He found 70% of the soldiers he treated had reduced anxiety and paranoia. It's like, I can breathe, like I can actually breathe. It's crazy. Dr. Mulvaney is hoping the results of the Army's clinical trial will make SGB more widely available. These people, they wrote a blank check to their nation that included their life. And as citizens, we, we need to help them when they come home, when they're broken. Jonathan Zering also found his way to Dr. Mulvaney for an SGB. I felt like a brand new man. 
And when I say a brand new man, what I mean was I had to control my feelings. It was like I was my own self, my old self. I was John Ziering pre-combat again. After the shot, Ziering found something else had changed too. He had a different attitude toward therapy. It does not eliminate you having PTSD. It does not make it so you no longer went through those traumatic experiences. But what it does is it makes it so you're not drowning. It gives you a little bit of room. It gives you room for to go to get therapy. It gives you room to get help. I think there's enough evidence out there that this is a valid therapy. Uh, and it's, it's something that works. Former Brigadier General Donald Bolduck had an SGB injection when he was commander of special operations in Africa. It made such a difference that in 2016, he became the first and so far the only active duty senior officer to admit that he too suffered from PTSD. It took him eight years to overcome the stigma. Do you remember this soldier? I certainly do. Marine Special Operations. A former Green Beret, Bolduck showed us a memorial in his office to the 72 soldiers he lost over 10 deployments. He cheated death himself numerous times, surviving firefights, a 2,000 pound bomb, and this helicopter crash which knocked him unconscious. What was it like to be around him during that time? You just don't know what's coming. You don't know what's gonna set him off. It was his wife, Sharon, who finally made Balduck confront his PTSD. Get help, she said, or she and the children would leave him. I'm done. I can't do this by myself anymore. I didn't, I didn't marry you to be a single parent. Balduck had tried traditional therapy with little relief. It was the SGB, he told us, that finally lifted the fog. Oh, it was magnificent. Everything was crisper and clearer, and I, you know, he was I was so much more relaxed. I was backed like, off and relaxed instantly. So, and I so think I even nice. said, "Why didn't we do this years ago?" <laughs> you know, but I don't think we knew about it. No. Now retired, Bolduck told us he was bypassed for a promotion. Part of the reason he believes is his outspokenness about PTSD among active duty soldiers. Not one of my superiors reached out to me. One told me that it's not going to bode well for me and recommended that I stop talking about it because the more I talk about it, the more problems they have. It's, it's so widespread in the military today, but yet there's this stigma. Yes. Terrible stigma. Lack of understanding. Not understanding the science behind it, not understanding what's happening. So how important is stellate ganglion block in fighting post-traumatic stress? I think it's hugely important. And I think that it needs to be a, uh, an intervention that's part of every post-traumatic stress therapy. This is Victor. Part of Bold Duck's therapy is Victor, his service dog, who helps him stay calm. I'm a leader. Bold Duck continues to speak out and tells audiences all over the country that treatment for PTSD should carry no more stigma than a broken ankle. You are strong when you ask for help, not weak. You are strong, so don't be afraid to ask for help no matter what it is. Jonathan Zering told us SGB was a game changer. Henry Cotto said he wished other veterans could find the relief he did. I've lost a couple friends to suicide. You know, to, um, just thinking that, you know, this treatment, if it was widely available, you know, those guys could have been around. I've never had this relief before. It never wasn't a pill, it wasn't a bottle of alcohol, it was a shot in my neck that I'd never even heard of that lasted maybe a 15 minute procedure and it helped me.